Our first presenter is Dr. Joseph R. West. He is currently the Deputy Chief Family Health Branch at the Arkansas Department of Health where he directs the newborn screening program for sickle cell disease. Prior to serving in this position, he was an assistant professor of pediatrics at Arkansas Children's Hospital and UAMS. Dr. West was born in Mobile, Alabama. He is a summa cum laude graduate of the University of South Alabama. He earned his Doctor of Medicine degree from the University of South Alabama College of Medicine and completed his pediatric residency training at Arkansas Children's Hospital, UAMS. Dr. West earned a Master of Public Health degree from Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics, a member of the Central Arkansas Pediatric Society, and the American Academy of Pediatrics. He has served on multiple committees, including the Arkansas Sickle Cell Task Force, and currently serves on the Arkansas Genetics Advisory Committee, the Arkansas Elderly Childhood Commission, and the Child Health Advisory Committee. He has authored and co-authored several publications related to newborn and childhood screening in Arkansas. Dr. West also serves on the editorial board of the publication Parenting in Arkansas. Our second presenter will be Dr. Carolyn S. Sicente. Dr. Sicente currently serves as the assistant professor Division of Hematology, Oncology Department of Pediatrics College of Medicine at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. She earned her Doctorate of Medicine degree from the University of South Carolina in 1989 and was a pediatric fellow from 1992 until 1995 at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Dr. Sicente holds several professional licenses and board certifications and has earned a number of honors and awards. She researched and was awarded grants to include the Genetic Services Project, Living Well with Sickle Cell, Health Resources and Services Administration. Dr. Sicente serves on several committees at Arkansas Children's Hospital to include the Interdisciplinary Care Committee, Transfusion Committee, and Patient Care Committee. Since 1993, she has authored and co-authored many publications related to sickle cell disease, with her latest article in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in 2006. Angela B. Moe, our third presenter, has a BSN, RN, RNP. She is the sickle cell specialty nurse at Arkansas Children's Hospital, where she has been a nurse since 1992. She has been the sickle cell specialty nurse through the UAMS Department of Pediatrics since July 1998 and works with Dr. Suzanne Cicente, Dr. Shelley Crary, and Dr. Rebecca Patterson in the clinical setting. Mrs. Moe also has past nursing experience in the infant toddler unit as lactation specialty nurse and pediatric GI specialty nurse. She is the study coordinator for the sickle cell studies held at Arkansas Children's Hospital. Mrs. Moe is very active in the sickle cell community, acting as educator, counselor, fundraiser, public relations, and camp nurse. Angela Moe is married to Elvis Moe for the past 24 years, and the two have three great children. Darian LaJoy, Elvis DeAndre, and Aiden Levi. She is an active and proud member of Grace Temple Church. Her favorite pastimes are spending time with her family and friends, reading and studying her Bible, listening to music, volunteering, cooking, and watching TV. Mrs. Moe believes knowledge is power, and this is essential to improving all communities. Our first presenter, Dr. West. Try to stand here. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Is this thing working? Um, I, I'd like to talk to you, and I'm very privileged to talk to you about uh, a program that I think has been very, very 
productive and very rewarding uh, to Arkansas over the years, and that's newborn screening for sickle cell disease. Um, I don't have a, a lot of time, so we'll go, go through this fairly fast. I want to start out just explaining a little bit about the way the uh, newborn screening program works in Arkansas. I know a lot of you are probably familiar with it, but just to summarize briefly, uh, every baby that's born in the state has blood drawn uh, for newborn screening while they're in the nursery. Um, in addition to sickle cell, we actually screen for uh, 25 other disorders. So babies get tested for a lot of stuff these days. But it's all done on one card, and I apologize I don't have a picture of the, of the newborn screening card that we use. Part of the collection form has demographic information. They enter in the baby's name and the mother's name, and date of birth and all that good stuff. And then on the end of the form, there's a, a strip of filter paper. It's about this wide, about this, this long and about this wide and there's five or six circles and the nurse or the lab person in the nursery does a heel stick they prick the baby's heel and drop the blood onto the filter paper collection form they let the blood dry and the form is sent to the public health laboratory at the Arkansas Department of Health that's where all the newborn screening testing takes place on, on the blood spot specimens. And one of those disorders is sickle cell disease. So let's move to the next one. Just a little background on how we came to be where we are with sickle cell screening in Arkansas. In 1986, there was a paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this uh, paper involved a, um, a multi-center trial and what the all these different medical centers around the country were, were looking at was whether it was beneficial to give babies with sickle cell disease uh, prophylactic penicillin to give them antibiotics uh, early in life to help prevent some of the severe infections that they're prone to get and sure enough the study found that there was tremendous benefit from starting babies on prophylactic penicillin prior to four months of age. And so what that did, it said, well, if we're gonna start on, on antibiotics this early, we have to know who they are. And this really drove the, the pressure for newborn screening for sickle disease all around the country. So up to this point, very, very few states had even uh, tinkered with the idea of screening babies for sickle cell disease, but after this it, it just took off like wildfire. Uh, the federal government put out some grants and Arkansas, the Department of Health, uh, applied for one of those and uh, at, at about the same time uh, we got legislation uh, passed in 1987 and that was Act 573. And that's the one that, that mandated uh, newborn screening for sickle cell disease. Uh, up to this point, we had only we were only screening for two disorders: PKU or phenylketonuria, and congenital hypothyroidism. Sickle cell disease was the third disorder added in Arkansas. Um, so we got the grant, and then in 1988, uh, they finally were ready. They had the lab stuff ready, and the people lined up and we were finally ready to start screening and October of 88 was coincidentally the first month that I started at the health department so I, I got to see this uh, from the very beginning let's go to the next one so originally we did what's called cellulose acetate electrophoresis this is one of the earlier methods of electrophoresis for for looking at hemoglobins what what you try to do is you you want a visual separation of the hemoglobins to see what, which of the different hemoglobins are there. So in the normal newborn baby, all you see basically is fetal hemoglobin or hemoglobin F and A hemoglobin, hemoglobin A. But if there's sickle disease, you don't see the A. All you see is fetal hemoglobin and sickle hemoglobin. So we needed a good, reliable method to separate out those hemoglobins and, and tell us what 
what the baby's uh, status was. We started out with cellulose acetate and citrate agar was our confirmation, but pretty quickly we decided that there was a better way and there was a method called isoelectric focusing. And within about a year or so, we actually switched over to that as the primary method. And I'll show you a picture in a minute and you can kind of see what, what this uh, does for us. And we, we went with that for a long time and then, but then within the last seven or eight years, we switched over to what's called high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC. And, and that really gives us a nice sweet separation of the hemoglobins. We can quantify it if we need to. We're still using the isoelectric focusing, the IEF, as confirmation. So that's where we are now. And that's actually the way a lot of states do their newborn screening for sickle disease. Let's go to the next. This is a picture, I washed out. This is our HPLC device. The specimens go in here. You're basically running the samples through a column of packed material that has uh, certain charges on it. You, you put solvents in and the hemoglobin, and you do it under high pressure, and the hemoglobins come out the other side at different times. So you know, if you, if you study it and you know what the knowns are, you can, you can tell um, you know, whether it's a sickle hemoglobin or if it's an A hemoglobin or a fetal hemoglobin or a C hemoglobin. So let's go to the next. This is, this is not an actual patient. This actually just shows where the um, peaks occur in one of these HPLC systems. Um, so you, you got hemoglobin F or fetal hemoglobin over here. This is hemoglobin A, hemoglobin S, hemoglobin C, D, E. Uh, you can sort them out pretty well. And it's, it's not so much the actual peak, it's more the area underneath the, um, the peak that's important. That kind of tells you how much uh, hemoglobin you have there. And the software can calculate that area underneath the spike. Uh, next one. This is one, uh, on, and these are not actual from our lab, these are stock photos uh, from the internet, but this is a, a baby, not a brand newborn. Uh, this is probably about a six month old baby. Um, but it illustrates pretty well. You have a nice large peak here with the hemoglobin S. You have no hemoglobin A, which should be in here somewhere. And then the rest is pretty much fetal hemoglobin. So this would be a, a baby with disease. This is a pattern we would see in a baby with, with classic homozygous SS sickle disease. There's really no hemoglobin A present. Next. Isoelectric focusing. Uh, this is the control column here. So this is hemoglobin A, hemoglobin F, hemoglobin S, hemoglobin C. They're actually fairly, they, they look a little blurry here, but these are fairly sharp bands compared to what we used to see on the old cellulose acetate, for example. These are very sharp. And this is one, even though they, they show the A here, this is the patient with the, this is the patient specimen. This is fetal hemoglobin here. This is S hemoglobin here. There really is no A hemoglobin. This is the A over here. This is the control, this is the patient. So there's really no A here where there should be. So that just confirms that this patient has sickle disease. Uh, patient with trait, again, this is about a six month old. When they're, in, when they're in the newborn period, you get mostly fetal hemoglobin. It's probably 90, 95% fetal hemoglobin. So what you would see is a whole lot more of, of this and a whole lot less of this and this. But with a trait baby, you get about equal amounts of, of A and S. Uh, typically, there's a little bit more of the hemoglobin A than hemoglobin S in sickle trait. Next. And again, isoelectric focusing. Uh, you have the, um, the, the sickle hemoglobin and the A hemoglobin present in approximately equal amounts. There's a little bit of F. Again, this is an older baby. Um, it just, I just picked that because it's easier for you to see. Um, sickle and A are about the same amount, so that's a trait. Next one. 
So just to kind of summarize what we've found over the years, uh, we started in October of 1988. These are numbers all the way through December of last year. There are just over 600 cases of sickle disease so far. Uh, the majority are the classic homozygous SS disease. We've, we've had quite a few uh, uh, what are called double heterozygous sickle hemoglobin C, where you, have, you inherit the sickle trait from one parent, you inherit the hemoglobin C trait from another parent, and when those come together, the baby has sickle hemoglobin C disease. That's a, a mild, typically a milder form of the disease. They can certainly still have problems and uh, we do refer them on to sickle cell clinic. They need care. Uh, it, it's just typically not as severe as the, as the classic disease. And then we have a, a few, about one a year, we, on average we get sickle beta plus thalassemia. Again, they inherit the sickle from one parent and the beta thalassemia from the other parent. Uh, and that's also uh, usually uh, a milder form of the disorder. Just overall summary results, this is broken down by race and you know all we can go on is what the form says and you can see that by far the vast vast, vast majority are, are listed as African American. We've had a few uh, Hispanic babies, one that was listed as Asian which was a surprise and um, We've had just a few that were listed as either other or mixed. Um, we screen every baby. We don't uh, try to look at the form and say, is this baby at high risk or low risk for sickle disease? We screen every baby. We can't rely on what the form says. You know, people make mistakes. As I was just talking to Dr. Harris, you know, I, Race is becoming a little more subjective, really. It's 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 kind of hard. These 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 classifications are just kind of you know getting to be um, a little harder to, to do. And it doesn't matter to us, you know. We're we're going to do the same thing regardless. But I I just thought I'd present this in case anybody was curious. But that's the way, at least on the form, they they were reported to us. Next. So when you do the averages on that, that comes out to about 26 cases a year of one of these three main categories of sickle cell uh, disease. About 26 a year. Um, and uh, by the number of births in, a, in Arkansas of African Americans, we know that comes out to about roughly around one in 300 African American births has one of these sickle disorders. Uh, for the classic SS disease, it's about 1 in 500. But when you add them all up, it's about 1 in 300. And then when you look at the trait, which we do, as I said, we do detect the traits as well, uh, it's about 1 in 12, which is pretty consistent with what you see in the national literature. Thought you might be interested in knowing where the cases uh, are are most commonly found. These are based on the county of the baby's residence as reported on the newborn screening form. As you might expect, counties with higher populations of the, of the group at risk are going to have a higher number. So Pulaski's number one, Jefferson, Crittenden, St. Francis, Mississippi, and Union. These six counties account for well over half of all the cases we found in the 23 plus years we've been screening. And just for a graphical representation, in the yellow are counties that have had at least 10 cases uh, over this, in this total over those 23 years. The gray counties have had one to nine cases, and the, the white areas have, have had zero cases detected through newborn screening. Um, which, uh, you know, again, kind of reflects the areas of greater population where you might expect uh, more of the individuals at risk to reside. So what do we do when we get a positive result? Um, let me just say first that the, our screening technique has, has been pretty darn accurate over the years. 
Uh, we've had very, very few that turned out differently from what the screening suggested they were. Uh, if we get a positive, it's, it's pretty much going to be a case. I mean, they're going to have something. Um, so we go ahead and treat them presumptively as if they have uh, the disease. We, we try to get them uh, started. We get their local doctor, if we can, to go ahead and start them on penicillin prophylaxis as early as possible. We uh, refer them to a pediatric hematologist, which is most often Arkansas Children's Hospital, Dr. Sicente and Angela and that fine group. Um, occasionally some of the babies in East Arkansas do end up but you know at La Honor and it's just more convenient geographically for some folks. But um, and we and we try to get them to get a repeat uh, test done through a, another lab just to make sure. But you know the, the the times we've had a discrepancy between our result and the reference lab, usually we've been right and they've been wrong. We run into problems with them because you know they have adult pathologists screening these things. They're not used to seeing all the people in the world. They miss some of the stuff without seeing this. It's, uh, it can be a problem. But typically, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're proven to be on target most of the time. So, as far as trade, trade results go, um, we, we uh, do report trade. Some states, you know, they do the screening and they don't even report the trade results because it's not what they're looking for. The main thing they're looking for is the disease. We've always reported the trades. Uh, we report them to the baby's doctor, and we also report them directly to the baby's parents. Um, we, we send the parents uh, a fact sheet as well uh, that explains the trade result. And uh, we do, you know, we, we a C tray or E tray or B tray. We, you know, we have sheets for those. We hope that helps explain. In the past, we used to have civil trade counselors uh, on staff uh, through the program. We lost those with funding cuts. More recently, we had, a, we had an arrangement of parents for inclusive, I mean, the partners for inclusive communities. Uh, that they were going to provide this trade counseling to parents. We started a brochure in the, in the letters to the family and said, you know, please contact partners if, if you get you know, a lot more information, but unfortunately they lost their funding too. <laughs> so we're, we're not in a great position with the trade council right now. We, the parents do know that they can contact us and they can call us. Our partners follow up people and they will be happy to talk to them and explain. Um, but I wish we were doing a little better with, with trade council. In the past we even offered home visits. When we first started, we had people, the family wanted it, they, they'd come out and talk to you and sit down and talk to you. I thought it was a great service. Yeah. That's uh, about all I have, about all I have time for. We'll open the floor up later on for questions, I think. Appreciate you.